What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G and the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. Now as always, if you want to learn more about either phone individually, definitely check out the description where I will be linking to several other videos about each of them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we're getting a 6.6 inch 90Hz PLS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 400, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. With the OnePlus Nord N300 5G, we're getting a 6.56 inch 90Hz IPS LCD display with a 720p resolution, a PPI of 269, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio as well. So in a lot of ways, these phones are pretty much the same. Sure, technically the A14 5G is a tiny bit larger, but really it's by such a small amount that you can't really even tell. But the main difference here is that with the A14 5G, again, we are getting a 1080p resolution versus only 720p with the OnePlus Nord and 300 5G. And this is going to make the image a lot sharper. So if you're doing stuff like watching videos, for example, where the image quality is a bit more important, then the A14 5G is going to be a bit better. But honestly, in pretty much every other way, for more basic stuff like web browsing, social media, and even watching the occasional video every now and then, I mean, it's not going to look bad here. So for that kind of stuff, the OnePlus Nord and 300 5G is going to be perfectly fine too. But again, if you really do want a nicer looking image, the A14 5G will have an advantage. Now for storage, both phones are getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, so no difference here. But keep in mind, while 64 gigabytes, in my opinion, is really a bare minimum at this point in 2023, for the average user, it's still going to be at least decently okay. So as long as you're not constantly downloading stuff like apps, games, and things that take up more space, then the storage we're getting with these phones is going to be perfectly fine for you. But that being said, of course, if you're more of a heavy user and you do tend to have a lot of stuff on your phone, or maybe you just don't want to ever have to worry about storage, in that case, you might want to go for something that has more storage. Storage. For security features, both phones do have face unlock as well as fingerprint scanners right here on the power keys. So definitely great placement there. And I am glad that with both phones, we are getting multiple options besides a pin to unlock them. But starting with the A14 5G, let's go ahead and give them a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. And now for the OnePlus. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, both fingerprint scanners worked real well. I guess the OnePlus was a little bit faster, but regardless, no issues at all. And again, both phones do have face unlock too, so if you want to use that instead, you always can. For the cameras, with the A14 5G, we got a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. With the OnePlus Nord N300 5G, we got a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a dual camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So I guess there actually is something that has fewer camera features than the A14 5G. I have been saying it's too bad the A14 5G has pretty much everything except an ultra wide camera, but with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G again, there's not even a macro camera. So unless you're only taking regular photos and maybe using portrait mode, you are probably going to want to go with something else. That being said though, the A14 5G has a bit of an advantage because again, this phone does have a macro camera at least. And while this is not the best macro camera ever, not by far, it does at least get the job done. And considering this is more of a lower end device, I guess I can't really complain too much. Now, as far as the actual photo quality goes, I feel like these phones are roughly equal, but both phones for being more entry-level devices do take really good photos. So for the average user, if you are looking for a phone in this price range that has a really good camera, I actually think these are two of the best options. To give you a better idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Again, I definitely think this phone takes really nice photos. So if you're taking pictures for stuff like Instagram, for example, especially things where you might be using portrait mode a bit more often, then the A14 5G will be a great choice. And then here are some pictures taken with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. Again, I feel like the quality is pretty much the same. Of course, when it comes to photos, this is going to be subjective, so definitely make of it what you will, but I think the quality is roughly equal between the two. But that being said, again, with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G, the photos do look really good too, so it really comes down to whether or not you want a macro camera. If you do, then of course, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G will be a better choice, but if you don't really care, then again, either phone will be perfectly fine. When it comes to RAM and processor, with the A14 5G, this phone has 4GB of RAM with the Exynos 1330 processor. With the OnePlus Nord N300 5G, this phone is also getting 4GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 810 processor. Now, both phones do have really good performance for what they are. I would say in general, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G is a little bit faster, but really not by much. You're not going to see a huge difference between the two. But if you're going to be on your phone a little bit more, doing the same kind of stuff, but you just want a phone that's maybe a little bit faster, then the OnePlus Nord N300 5G will have a small advantage. But keep 
people mind the difference is really not that big, and the A14 5G, especially for what it is, is definitely a pretty fast phone too. Either way, I feel like for more basic activities like web browsing, social media, watching videos, and some light mobile gaming here and there, for that kind of stuff, either phone is going to be perfectly fine. Now, I did run Geekbench 5 benchmark tests on both phones, and here are the scores I got. So as you can see here, again, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G did score a bit higher, but in reality, when you're actually using the phones, again, the difference isn't really going to be that noticeable, but if you do want the faster phone between the two, then the OnePlus Nord N300 5G is technically a bit faster. Now both phones do have 5000 mAh batteries, with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G supporting 15 watt fast charging, and the OnePlus Nord N300 5G supporting 33. So really, the only difference here is the fast charging, and keep in mind, unlike the Samsung that doesn't even come with a wall adapter, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G does actually come with this really large 33 watt fast charger, so not only is the fast charging really good, but you can take full advantage of it right away, which is more than you can say for pretty much every phone out there, including higher end phones. So if the charging speed is important to you, then the OnePlus Nord N300 5G will have an advantage, but if you don't really care, if you just want a large battery, and you want really good battery life and longevity, then in that case, either phone is going to be a great choice. For software, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G does currently have Android 13, and with Samsung software support, you can also expect to get several other major updates in the future. On the other hand, with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G, this phone does currently only have Android 12, but I imagine, I mean, it's a OnePlus phone, it's probably at least going to get Android 13 at some point. But beyond that, if software support really matters to you, I would definitely go with the A14 5G because Samsung software support is quite a bit better. In addition to this, both phones do have NFC, so if you like to make contactless mobile payments using Tap and Pay, you'll be happy to know you can do this with either phone. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? In general, this is actually really close, but because it has a nicer looking display with the 1080p resolution, a macro camera giving us more flexibility when taking photos, and a newer version of Android with much better software support, I would personally say the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G is the better device here. That being said though, keep in mind, the OnePlus Nord N300 5G in a lot of areas really isn't that far behind. Like again, with the camera, sure it doesn't have a macro camera, but the macro camera with the A14 5G isn't really that great anyway, and the OnePlus still has really good photo quality, so if you're taking a lot of pictures, most likely just regular pictures, these phones are really similar, and the OnePlus is still going to be perfectly fine for that. And again, remember, the OnePlus is also slightly faster, and it has much better fast charging too. But all the same, I feel like the advantages the OnePlus has are still not quite enough to make a difference, especially when compared to the 1080p resolution with the A14 5G and the much better software support. But that being said, again, the N300 5G for what it is is still a pretty good phone, and if you're looking for an affordable 5G phone and you can find this phone for a really good deal, I do think it's still definitely worth considering. But this concludes my comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G and the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about either phone individually, definitely check out the description, where I will be linking to several other videos about each of them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.